Hey everyone, it's Audrey and this is going to be a Q&A video. Um, I actually went on a brand trip recently. I wanted to vlog it and kind of share with you guys and answer your questions about what it's like traveling as an influencer. Um, I really dislike that word, but um, that's just what it's called, so that's what I'm gonna call it. But yeah, I had to fly home two days early because I ended up getting really sick. Um, so the footage that I have is not much of a vlog. So I figured that I would do a Q&A instead. I did a questions poll in my Instagram. You guys asked a lot of questions about the influencer industry, um, brand trips, just everything in general. So I put them all together and I'm gonna answer them. So yeah, let's just get started. <laughs> okay, so I have the questions on my phone. So if I'm looking down or looking at my phone, just answering the questions. And the first one is, how do you get started? So I know this answer is probably gonna sound really simple, but just start. Um, when I first started my channel, when I first started YouTube and I guess kind of pursuing um, becoming an Instagrammer or something like that, um, I always wish that I had started earlier. Um, I think I was kind of waiting for the right equipment. I, I felt like I didn't have the right computer, the right camera. Um, I didn't have the right skills to do anything. I felt like I kept putting it off. Um, I have friends that have put off starting their YouTube channel for that reason as well. If you just start, you can kind of figure out everything else along the way. Another tip is to just kind of see how someone that you really admire, another, I guess, YouTuber, or Instagrammer, or blogger, just kind of see what they're doing, um, kind of see what um, platforms they're using, what kind of cameras and apps and everything like that. Try it out. If you don't like it, you can always adjust. I think the hardest step is just to put yourself out there in the first place and then you can learn as you go along. Hope that makes sense. But the next question is, how do you first, how do you first pitch yourself to brands or did they approach you? Um, and the next question is kind of related as well. Do the brands always come to you or do you ever go to them directly? I don't know. I never really started pitching myself to brands. I guess if I were to pitch like today, I would drop up an email, find out who the social media manager is, something like that. And I would just kind of share my channel with them, share my socials, ask if they were open to working together. Um, the first email I don't think should be too in depth. I think, especially if you're cold emailing, if no one has ever heard of you before, or if the brand isn't aware of you, I think it's much better to just reach out and ask if they have any kind of campaigns going on, if you know they're working on anything special, if they'd maybe like to work together. Um, you can develop the relationship from there. But I think uh, like a full-on sales pitch is too much, like right off the bat, unless you already know them. Did I answer that entire question? Do the oh do the brands always come to you, or do you ever go them to go to them directly? Um, most of the time they come to me, but I think it's just because I put so much content out there and I make my email readily available. It's in my YouTube um, bio, it's in my Instagram bio, it's on my website. I just make it really easy for brands to reach out to me and I guess my strategy has always been to push out as much content as I can because that's what I like to do. Um, and then I just use that as my portfolio for when people like to work with me. Moving on, what equipment do you use for vlogging? Is iPhone 10 enough? Um, well, first of all, I don't have an iPhone. I haven't had an iPhone in, I wanna say like three years. So I, I really don't know if it's good enough, but the equipment that I use for vlogging is just my vlogging camera. It's the Canon G7X Mark II. I also have a little tripod. I think I talk about it in my, um, my personal items packing video. But yeah, I just bring that with me. That's my designated vlog camera. I don't really use that to take photos or anything like that. Um, it has a flip screen so I can see myself just so, I don't know, I feel more comfortable being able to see myself when I'm vlogging. Um, in the past, I've used my phone. I think having your phone as a vlogging camera is fine. Um, I just personally don't prefer it because the battery like I feel like it's always going to run out um, and then I just find it easier to just plug in the SD card into my computer when I edit. I don't think you need to have a fancy vlogging camera in general. I think the content, um, your personality, I think that's what people are mainly going to be look at, looking at. But yeah, I don't think your vlog has to be super professional. I think it's all about you. So if an iPhone 10 is all you have, I think that's totally fine. <laughs> Next question is what clothing brands sponsor you? 
Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, hmm. Honestly, I don't feel like I get a lot of clothing sponsorships. I'm always really upfront when I'm getting sponsored on Instagram, um, on my YouTube channel. I do get gifted um, from like Some Days Lovin', Mink Pink, Revolve. Um, in the past, I got gifted by Forever 21. So I guess if you just kind of look through my Instagram or my YouTube, I'm, I'm always saying whether or not it's sponsored or gifted or something like that. Next question is, does it pay well as an influencer or is it hard since there isn't a steady income? Um, I would have to say both. Uh, I feel like it can pay really well, but because it isn't steady, it's difficult at the same time um, when you're working as a creative. I mean, freelance anything. I feel like you're constantly kind of hustling and chasing the next project. Um, so yeah, it can be, pay very well because I feel like there's a lot of I guess money in that industry. There's a lot of money in advertising. The answer to this question is both. <laughs> Next question is how do you negotiate your pay? What's the minimum and base from what? I don't really know how to answer this because I feel like it's a different kind of minimum for everyone. Um, it depends on what kind of influencer you are, I feel like, um, whether you're fitness, whether you're fashion, whether you're beauty, whether you're lifestyle. All those different categories I feel like are in completely different um, price brackets. Um, and then it also depends on you, um, what your reach is, where, where you are, like are you on Instagram or on YouTube or you're just blogging. I, I think if you're maybe confused about where to start, I would say to just start creating, start putting your content out there. Um, everyone I know has kind of gone off of um, collaborations that they've gone in the past. So I think it's just important to focus on your craft and then eventually you can negotiate your pay. But I don't think that's something that you should worry about um, in the beginning because everyone I know, including myself, it took a while to get to a point where, you know, you can get paid for your work as a creator because I feel like a lot of people don't see it as a real job. Another thing is I think that you also have to think about how much your time is worth. You have to think about how much you're willing to do for how much money. If you if you feel like you're at that point where you can negotiate pay, I think it's always it's always helpful when you're talking to a brand to say that you're um, open to discussing rates and then you know go from there. I feel like it's really dependent on the relationship you have to the brand that you're speaking to. Um, it's it's just different for everybody. <laughs> Next question is, do you usually have to pay to attend these brand trips or is it covered? All of the brand trips that I've been on, for the most part, at least the flight and the accommodations are covered, but not always. Sometimes they just invite you to, en to enjoy like an event that they're sponsoring or they just want to invite you to hang out. Um, but yeah, usually it's covered, but I, I wouldn't say all the time. Um, it just really depends, like I said, uh, not every brand is the same. Everyone kind of does things a different way. Next question is, are you obligated to talk about the products from trips? Um, sometimes, um, but I like to get all that information beforehand, especially if it's a brand that I don't really know. Um, sometimes brand trips, they kind of invite you to learn about them if you don't know that much information about them. I wouldn't go on a brand trip unless I knew the brand because that's kind of creepy. <laughs> I feel like the experience more often than not is a really great experience. So it's something that I want to share. I, I don't feel obligated to talk about the products or to talk about the trip in general. I, I just want to because it's interesting and I feel like it's out of the normal um, and I'm really grateful and I just want to share. I think there have been some trips though where um, it was just kind of like, hey, do you want to go on this trip? Um, and if so, would you mind talking about, you know, this campaign that we're working on, this product that we're working on? It's never like, oh, you have to do this. Um, you can always say no. Is everyone as nice as they seem? Uh, for the most part, yeah. I, I think I've been in a couple situations where I kind of went in thinking someone was a lot nicer than they are. Um, and they turned out not to be, but I feel like that's life in general. Not everyone is as nice as they seem. I don't think that's just confined to social media. I think that can be at work or there's always outliers in life. <laughs> Next question is how many main topics should I have as an influencer? Um, I don't 
really know how to answer this question. You can have as many topics as you want to. Um, I'm not sure if it's asking like if you, you should just focus on fashion or lifestyle or travel. I guess for me, I just like to talk about my life in general, so I don't really confine that to a certain topic. If I want to talk about fashion, I'll talk about fashion. If I want to talk about skincare, traveling, uh, whatever is going on in my life. Um, I think it's good to be broad because I feel like we all have a lot of interests, not just one. But I guess if someone just wants to, I guess, focus on fitness or just travel or something like that can be helpful to just be an expert at one thing. I don't think you should have like a set number of topics. I think you can do whatever you want. And I think when you kind of confine yourself to just one topic, it's almost, or just a couple topics, it's almost like you're shunning other people. Um, I think it's good to be well-rounded and to just share as many topics as you're interested in. But I, I don't know if I'm answering that question, but that's that's my answer. <laughs> Next question is, was there a specific thing that put you on the influencer map? I'm a big fan of your vlogs. Back in the day, <laughs> when I first started on Instagram, I was one of those um, accounts that got featured on Instagram. So essentially I went from having like 3,000 followers to 40. Um, and a lot of people thought I bought my followers at the time. So I got a lot of hate for that, but I, I didn't. I've never bought followers. I think that's a horrible way to increase your presence online. But I would say that that kind of put me on the influencer map. Uh, the thing about those kinds of things, about gaining a lot of followers um, from like a shout out or from being featured or when people do like loop giveaways and stuff, I feel like you don't really retain those followers though so once i had hit like 40k i lost a lot of those people i want to say i lost like 10k um and i wasn't growing for a long time and then i don't know i just kept posting on youtube kept posting on instagram then slowly made my way up to where i am today so i think that helped because it got me kind of out of the under 10k range um but once that was over, my engagement kind of went down and I had to build it back up. So yes, but it, it didn't bring me to where I am today. I kind of had to like steadily grow. And then there are a couple of videos that did really well on my YouTube channel, I guess viral for me, um, my DIY dream catcher video and also my um, room tour videos. I feel like that kind of brought me a lot of new subscribers um, because a lot of people watch those videos so i would say the instagram feature and then a couple of my videos did really well on youtube next question is you think it's easy still to become an influencer with how saturated ig is i see new accounts all the time <laughs> that are just skyrocketing and just growing really fast so i wouldn't say that it's easy but it's definitely possible regardless of how saturated um, instagram is uh, I think the only thing is it's just hard to differentiate. It's hard to be a distinct influencer in such a such a saturated market. So no, don't think it's easy, but it's not impossible. Should I focus on IGTV or YouTube? Is it still possible to grow on YouTube? Um, yes, I think it's possible to grow on YouTube. And as for IGTV, I, I don't know anything about IGTV, honestly. I don't know what kind of content to put on there because I'm so used to YouTube. So I personally would rather focus on YouTube. And I think if you already have a presence on Instagram, just the addition of IGTV, you're still kind of putting a lot of energy into one platform. Uh, I think it's good to be well-rounded. I think you should be on multiple platforms if you wanna have a bigger audience. So I would say YouTube, but I don't know, I, I think IGTV helps if you're trying to really grow your Instagram presence. I don't know though, because I don't really focus on it. How important is it to have a perfect feed? Sometimes you don't post a pic because it doesn't fit. Having like a perfect feed, there is really no perfect feed. What is perfection, <laughs> you know? It's nice to have an aesthetically pleasing feed. Um, for brand purposes, I think when uh, brands are looking at your account for the first time or potential followers When they're looking at your account for the first time they kind of scroll through and see what your feed looks like 
Um, and I think if it's easy to get a feel for what kind of content you post just by scrolling through and clicking a couple photos, I feel like that can be really helpful because it's a clear message. Um, they kind of already know what they're going to get by following you. Um, but once someone follows you, once you're in you know, their feed, I don't think they really care about what your overall feed looks like. Um, that's just my opinion though, I, I don't know. I like my feed to kind of match, um, I like the colors to kind of complement one another. If it doesn't fit, that doesn't really bother me that much, I'll just kind of continue to edit whatever my feed is doing at the time, I'll just edit it to fit, <laughs> so as best as I can. Next question, do you ever feel pressure to always post something on IG even if you don't like the picture? I think I'm gonna split this question into two. Um, if I don't like something, if I don't like a picture, I'm not gonna post it um, because why would I post something I don't like? Um, but do I ever feel pressure to always post? Uh, kind of, I would say, because that's just what I've always done. I don't think I really take a break when it comes to Instagram um, just because I like to document. There's a couple times where I've gotten really sick or I just wasn't feeling it that I took a couple days off of posting. Um, but for the most part, I, I like to take photos, I like to share, I like to document stuff. Instagram is just a place where I like to post stuff, so I guess sometimes I feel pressure if I'm not feeling creative, um, but for the most part, I'm just always posting anyway. Moving on, how do you not feel overwhelmed by actually li living life to the fullest and sharing? Um, I suppose I really like to document in general, um, especially when I'm on trips. I just love to constantly be filming. I don't really feel overwhelmed by um, documenting as much as I feel overwhelmed by looking through all the footage later on because I'm constantly filming. Um, that's the part that overwhelms me because I film way too much. Next question is how do you manage everything? Um, I talked about this in my daily vlog that I recently posted. I actually have a manager, so she helps me manage everything, um, but I just take it one day at a time. Just try to answer all my emails, uh, keep my calendar updated, and it's kind of a crazy lifestyle because you never know what's gonna happen next, but I, I, I guess I'm managing everything well, hopefully. Just one day at a time, that's that's my answer. Moving on, how to remain organized from all the photos and videos, apps, etc. Photo organization, all my photos are kind of organized by month in my Lightroom. That's just a feature of Lightroom. Um, also on my phone, my Google phone, it's everything is already um, organized by day and month. That's, that's just Google Photos in general. And for videos, the raw footage, I don't really keep raw footage unless it's from a trip. Once I film a video and edit it, I'll just keep the video that I made and then all the raw footage, I don't really need it, so I'll get rid of it. Um, the only videos that I really keep, the raw videos, are from my trips because, I don't know, I like those the most. Um, and then they, I just keep them organized by um, by trip. I don't really have any apps that I use to organize. I feel like my phone, my Lightroom does it for me, and then videos, like I said, just by trip. How do you constantly think of ideas to produce in videos and posts? Uh, for Instagram posts, I'm just kind of sharing daily life, so whatever is going on with me that day, uh, however I'm feeling. Um, sometimes I'll post like a throwback picture, but more often than not, I just took it that day. Um, unless it's like a sponsored post that I've taken beforehand and had to get approved. It's not hard for me, I guess, to think of ideas for Instagram because that's just like my Instagram. That one's easy because it's just my daily grind that I'm sharing with you. Um, but videos are a lot more difficult. Uh, I'll ask my followers a lot of the time if they have any ideas, what they want to see. Um, a lot of the times I'll just get DMs or messages from you guys asking if I can make a video on something. And I think just in general, I'm, I'm always kind of thinking like, oh, this would be a really good video idea. Um, it's just whenever I get inspired. I don't really have a process where I'm thinking of how to come up with video ideas. I kind of just kind of pops in my head. I'm like, Oh, you know, that would be a really cool idea. What do you enjoy the most? And I think what I enjoy the most is just being able to make a living off of doing something creative. Um, 
when I was going to school, just growing up in general, I wasn't an artist. I, I can't draw. I don't think I can paint that well. Um, and I think I always thought creativity was very confined to being able to draw because that's the only art that I really ever knew. Being able to create something, being able to video edit and to learn more about photography and to have people hire you for those creative reasons, I think that's just really enjoyable because I never thought that I was creative ever and that's what I enjoy the most. I, I like I like that people enjoy my creative thoughts. I feel like I can't talk about this without sounding conceited, but that's what I that's what I enjoy the most. Let's just move on. Uh, what are the negative things about this job? I actually wrote a blog post about this, the downsides to being an influencer, um, and I'll link it in the description. A couple of the negative things that I think is, um, there's just a lot of judgment that goes on. A lot of people have opinions about the way that I live, and I think that because it's I don't know these people face to face, they feel comfortable telling me that I'm awful <laughs> a lot of the time. There's a certain thought process that because I choose to share a lot in my life that I should be comfortable sharing everything there is to know about me. If there's something that I would rather keep private, I'll get that, oh, you're being fake because you don't want to share that. And I think that's wrong. I think everyone is entitled to keep what they want private private. Um, so that's another negative thing I would say, that just because I choose to share aspects of my life, people feel entitled to know everything. And so, yeah, I, I think that's, that's, those are the negative things that I would say. Next question is, do you get much downtime? And if you want to do this full time, I feel like no. I, I don't feel like I ever really get a lot of downtime. I have to schedule downtime for myself. I try to answer your questions as much as I can. I'm always answering emails, talking to my manager, looking through contracts, editing, filming, um, just kind of thinking up new ideas. And there's projects that I've been meaning to start or work on or finish. Um, there's always, always something that I want to do. So going back to the previous question, because the income isn't steady, you always have to constantly be working to pull in those clients. It's kind of a 24 seven type of deal. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know how much downtime there isn't. Uh, I think it can be easy to see it as downtime because a lot of influencers just kind of post the high re highlight reel of everything, but I don't know. I don't think there's much downtime at all. <laughs> Last question is, do you have a separate, more personal social that you keep for close people or is it only here? Uh, I just have my Audrey Storm account and then I recently started an account with my husband. Um, it's called Welcome from the Wilsons. I wouldn't say that it's just for close people though. My main account is, that's where all my friends and family follow me as well. Um, so I don't have a personal social or anything like that. Everything that I share on my Instagram is personal. <laughs> um, it's just pertaining to my life already. Uh, so I don't feel like there's any need for me to have another personal social because that is my personal social. So I think that's all the questions I'm going to answer. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. I feel like this video is already going to be very long. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, you can put it in the comments down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!